and sits on the Armed Services, Banking and Intelligence Committees and joins us now. Senator, good morning to you. Good morning, Sandra. So do you, along with the president and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, believe that the virus came from that lab in Wuhan? Sandra, all the evidence at this point points to two labs in Wuhan. No evidence, and I mean no evidence at all, points to the seafood market in Wuhan. Now, all the evidence pointing to those labs, the fact that they use bats, that they research coronaviruses, that they have a history of bad safety practices, that the original uh, persons infected with the virus had no contact with the food market, all of that is circumstantial evidence, to be sure. But in intelligence questions, we rarely get direct or conclusive evidence. So I agree that all of the evidence, albeit circumstantial, points directly at those labs. And if the Chinese Communist Party has evidence to the contrary, they need to bring it forward to the world. So to be clear, you do not believe that it was created in that lab. You believe that it spread from that lab. Yeah, Sandra, those are two distinct questions. Now, whether the, whether the virus was genetically modified or engineered is a highly technical scientific question, and the weight of scientific opinion right now says that no, this was a naturally occurring virus. But a naturally occurring virus can, of course, be present in a laboratory where it's being studied. That is a different question from saying that laboratory might have had bad safety practices and there could have been an accidental breach, which was the original source of what has become this terrible pandemic. Okay, Senator, so I'm sure you have seen or read it by now, but Dr. Fauci, the lead infectious disease expert that has been taking us through all of it, is disputing that very claim that it spread from one of those two labs in Wuhan in a brand new interview with National Geographic. In this interview, Dr. Fauci says, quote, if you look at the evolution of the virus in bats and what's out there now, the scientific evidence is very, very strongly leaning toward this could not have been artificially or deliberately manipulated. Everything about the stepwise evolution over time strongly indicates that the virus evolved in nature and then jumped species. What is your reaction to that, Senator? So again, Dr. Fauci is talking primarily about whether a virus could have been manipulated genetically or modified in some way in a laboratory. Again, the weight of scientific opinion studying this virus around the world suggests that that is not the case. But that evolution certainly could have happened in nature before any animal was taken into the laboratory or in the laboratory itself. But even setting aside those questions, Sandra, I think we also have to point to how the Chinese Communist Party reacted. Rather than tell the world up front in December that there was a new virus, it was in Wuhan, it was highly contagious, which they obviously knew at the time, they deliberately misled the world, they allowed international air travel to continue in December and January thereby turning what could have been a local public health emergency into a global pandemic, the likes of which we haven't seen in a century. World Health Organization Senator is saying that if the United States has seen information or hard evidence that leads them to this conclusion that you two have come to, then it is time to share it. Is it that is that time now? Yeah, unfortunately, the World Health Organization is once again acting as the world political organization and an apologist for China. As I said, there is zero evidence, and I mean zero evidence, that this virus came from a seafood market in Wuhan. Yet the World Health Organization takes a perspective that unless there is conclusive direct proof of anything else, we must take the Chinese Communist Party's word as gospel and attribute to them benevolence and goodwill and good motives when the exact opposite is true when you're dealing with communists. Yeah, and, and to be clear in that interview with Dr. Fauci, he also goes on to say he does, not, he does not suggest that it was mistakenly transferred out of that lab. So we'll, we'll hear more on that coming up. Meanwhile, it is a big day today when the director of national intelligence uh, confirmation hearing will take place before the Senate Select Committee. John Ratcliffe, the president's pick to, to, as the intelligence chief, uh, he will be grilled before Senate Democrats. What do you expect from this confirmation hearing today, Senator? 
Now, I've gotten to know John well over the last several years. His district abuts Arkansas, so we've worked together on numerous issues affecting Texarkana and the Red River region. So I believe that John will make a very strong director of national intelligence. Obviously, the Democrats are going to discuss with him the, what they view as the politicization of intelligence. I don't think that's been happening under this administration, but it's always important for any intelligence leader, whatever their partisan background, to say that once they become an intelligence leader, they are going to focus on the evidence and the analysis. And we've had partisans who have been able to do that on both sides. Look at Leon Panetta as a Democrat or Mike Pompeo as a Republican. I'm sure John is going to give assurances to the Democrats who feel that they need, need those assurances and that he is going to be a strong director of national intelligence. All right. Senator Tom Cotton, we always appreciate you coming on the program. Hope to have you back again soon. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you.